Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the clean flight failsafe settings. Now, this is one of the new tabs that appeared in 1.10 of clean flight, and I've had a couple of requests from subscribers asking to explain how this actually works. So this is the video for those subscribers. So thank you for the question. Really good idea to cover this for those of you that were, isn't making sense. Now, all of this that we're going to go through is actually already covered in the clean flight documentation, and the clean flight documentation is one of the better sets out there for any of the open source flight controllers so do take some time if you're interested in knowing how something works it is all written out in there sometimes it doesn't quite make sense for those of us like me who like to learn by watching things so what we're going to do is we're going to go through that stuff here in the video so it all makes sense to those of you that may have looked at that and still got to the bottom of that page and still not been sure what it was all banging on about now, there are a number of fail safes that already exist on the quadcopters and multirotors and planes and everything else that we've built on the channel. In fact, we've set up a couple of planes recently where we went through the Tyrannus options for setting up the fail safe on the receiver. Now, if we think about all of the different things that have to go on between you moving the stick on the radio control and it appearing in the flight controller so that it can do something with the speeds of the motors to fly your quadcopter, there's actually quite a few steps. And it's worthwhile us talking about what those steps are because the failsafe in clean flight is there to protect against a certain amount of failure. The failsafe in the receiver is there to protect against the other half. And I would always urge people to, to set up both so that you had the maximum amount of protection in case something went wrong. Not having failsafe set up is probably the number one reason that pilots have flyaways, where a multicopter or plane flies away and is never seen again. So I would always recommend at the very least set up the failsafe on your radio receiver if you're using it with any craft, whether it's a plane, multi-rotor, whatever, with or without a flight controller. But if you're using something like clean flight, then we have an extra level of safety we can turn on using that tab. So very quickly, let's refresh our memory of the steps that go on between the radio and the flight controller so that the flight controller knows what we want to happen as a pilot. So we have our radio transmitter that listens and detects the position of all the controls, encodes that and sends that over 2.4 gigahertz radio signal over the airwaves until it hits the radio receiver. The radio receiver then hears that information, decodes it, and then sends that information to the flight controller over the attached cable or cables using something like PWM, SBUS, PPM, or one of the others like IBUS. And the flight controller hears that and we're all good. Now, let's talk about the easy one that we've already talked about on the channel first so that we understand that piece, and that's where we have receiver failsafe. Now, this is there in case something happens with the radio transmitter or the signal or it goes and flies behind something where it can't hear the radio at all. And the way this works is that the radio receiver is configured to set all the channels a predetermined value if it can no longer hear a signal from the radio. And that typically is zero throttle and all of the other controls at their neutral position. Now, on some radio receivers, you don't have the option to select failsafe. If that's the case, I personally wouldn't use them. I just think that's a little bit dangerous. And if you have a hiccup with the radio, then you're going to get into trouble. Also, there are radio receivers that have a feature called hold, and what that allows you to do is set it so that if it loses connection with the radio transmitter, it will just continue to pump out the channel values that it last heard. And again, that's fantastically dangerous, particularly for things like planes, uh, where if it's flying straight and level and at 50% throttle, it'll continue to fly straight and level at 50% throttle until it crash lands when the battery gives up. And that could be three or four miles away. So, do make sure that you understand how to set up the failsafe on your radio receiver. In things like the Tyrannus, you set it in the menu and then you rebind the receiver. In things like the Spectrum product, then when you bind the receiver to the radio, it automatically stores the values of each of the channels when you bind as the failsafe position. But make sure that that's the case. But if we go back and think about this, what happens then if something goes wrong from the radio receiver up to the flight controller. 
So for example, we might have a problem where the cable falls out, a little bit of soldering that we've done maybe wasn't as good as we thought it was, and the vibration from the craft has snapped the solder joint and the wires come loose. Or it might be that during that last crash you didn't quite notice that the cables were working loose. And one of my friends actually had this on a radio receiver, it unfortunately wiggled loose and he lost his aileron control. Or it might be that the receiver itself actually has a problem. Uh, early spectrum receivers were constantly being blamed for rebooting in flight. And if something happens on your craft, particularly if you have any servos that bind up, it might pull the five volts down on the craft below the level where the radio receiver is happy. So the radio receiver basically turns off and reboots, but the flight control is still okay. What happens in those instances? because the problems with things like the failsafe that we've already set up isn't going to help us at all on the radio receiver. And that's exactly where the failsafe for clean flight comes in. So this is really to protect us from a failure of the radio receiver or the connection to it. So the radio in your hands might be working perfectly, and the radio receiver might be hearing you, but then again it might have been ejected, it might have fallen off, the cable might have come loose, there might have been a little glitch on the power system and the radio receiver rebooted, or it's just having a bad day and it's completely frozen up. So in those situations, there are a couple of things that happen in clean flight. It goes through a two-stage process. The first is called stage one, and what that is about is the flight controller just having a slight pause, putting all the controls kind of back to a neutral position and just saying, oh, hang on a minute, I've lost the receiver, and waiting for the receiver to reappear. Now, the default timeout on that is about a second, um, and if the receiver reappears in that time, maybe it's a little brown out and then it starts working again, then the flight controller will continue. If it's something like the receiver has completely given up the ghost or the cable snapped or come off in the middle of your flight, then obviously that isn't going to happen. And after a failsafe delay, stage two will happen. And stage two, you can then tell it how you want the craft to behave, whether to drop or to land. So again, the clean flight failsafe is there to protect us from the radio receiver cable or on the connections between the radio receiver and the flight controller breaking. So now we've talked about that, let's jump into the tab in Clean Flight and let me quickly show you how those options all appear. So here we're on the PC and we're looking at Clean Flight. I have a little NAS A32 plugged in and let's connect and have a look at it. So here's the flight controller board that we're all connected to. We're currently running version 1.12 of Clean Flight and this is a version of the flight controller that has all of the sensors on there. At the moment we don't have a radio receiver plugged in but this should still allow us to, for me to show you the failsafe tab. So this is the new tab that was introduced and uh, here's all the settings that we've just talked about in that slide. So here are things called the valid pulse range settings. Now do remember whenever you're not sure about anything in the clean flight interface now it's really cute in that what you do is you just hover over anything you're not sure about and it'll actually tell you what those settings actually are. So in the valid pulse range settings this is the minimum and maximum pulse length that the flight controller is going to consider as valid. So at the moment as we've seen in lots of other places, if you look at things like the receiver, you'll see that they tend to have a middle value of 1500 and a low value of around 1000 and a high value of just under 2000 is typically what we see in this screen. In failsafe, what we're saying is if you hear length that is either lower than 885 or higher than 2115, then assume that something nasty has happened. And this can be quite handy. What you could do is you could bind your radio receiver and set up your failsafe on the receiver to send out one of these channels. And any channel that goes outside this minimum and maximum length will initiate the failsafe. So that's another way to be careful as well. So if you have a spare auxiliary channel on the radio that you're not using, I potentially would think about maybe binding it so that it goes down to something like 850 or pushes up a above something like 2200 or you can change these values so that that's the case. Under here we have the channel fallback settings so this is what happens in that stage one position so what do you do when initially something goes wrong and you're not getting valid pulses anymore from the radio receiver either because the receiver's unhappy or something's happened with the connection to the cable. 
And here are all of the different channels and you can individually select what they do. Hold, as we've talked about before, I think is spectacularly dangerous. I'd leave them all auto. What that does is set the pitch, roll and yaw to the center position and sets the throttle to low. So it kind of just hangs on in that position until we get to stage two. Now you can enable or disable stage two settings and uh, you can have it all in here. Uh, we've got it enabled on this one just so we can show you what it looks like. You can also then set it up by a, a failsafe switch. So if you go into modes, then you're, you can actually set up failsafe and add a range and that's great for testing. And then you have the, these two things here, which every number is 0.1 of a second. So 10 isn't 10 seconds, it's actually one second, and 100 is actually 10 seconds. So what it says is guard time for stage two activation is going to be a second. So when it hears these values, it's going to think, uh oh, something's gone wrong. It's going to set the channels as it appears here, and then it's going to wait a second for the receiver to appear. If the receiver uh, valid receiver signals don't appear on the channels, then it's going to go into fail safe stage two. The last thing we'll talk about is fail safe throttle low delay. Again, if we hover over here, what that's um, basically saying is if you don't hear anything for 10 seconds, just disarm the craft instead of executing the selected fail safe procedure. Um, so if the throttle's that low for that amount of time, basically turn off. And then we have the two things here, which is what are you going to do if we have an invalid pulse length, we get past one second and oh dear, it doesn't look like it's coming back and we go into fail sta stage two because we've got it turned on, what do you want to do? We can either drop, which is where it pretty much turns the motors off and we tumble from the sky. Uh, this is my favorite, um, only because if I have a problem and the craft is uncontrolled, I want it out the sky as fast as is humanly possible. I don't want it wandering into people, pets or property and doing any more damage than it already is going to. Um, or this one, you can select land. Now land, you can set the throttle value to use while landing. So again, we talked about a thousand being low throttle. So this one, you might set it um, and again, you want it really setting it so that it falls about a meter a second and you'd have to kind of play with this, but it might be that 1200 might be a value where it or descends in a controlled way. And then this other one here is the delay for turning off the motors. Again, it's in uh, 0.1 second increments. So 200 is actually 20 seconds. So what we're saying here is if fail stage two happens, then for 20 seconds, put the throttle at 1200 with everything else set at their neutral position and gently come down and try and hit the ground. Now this of course is assuming that uh, 20 seconds is going to be just the right amount of time to get your craft on the floor. If you're higher than that it's going to turn your motors off anyway and you're going to fall out the sky or if it's lower than that potentially you're going to hit the ground and uh, potentially have motors turning while it's on the floor too and that's why I say drop. So hopefully that explains how this all works. So the key is make sure that your receiver failsafe is set. Do test it. We've shown in other videos where we actually did our quadcopter for beginning series. We tested the failsafe and we turned off the radio and made sure that the channel values and the throttle all went back to zero. Remember to always test it with a prop to remove from the model in case something nasty happens. And then the other thing to do as well is if you want to check and see whether this actually works, you could do one of two things. You can either unplug the cable from the radio receiver and make sure it goes through this process or you could set it up so as one of the modes you have a little switch that you can click that will activate fail safe and allow you to test it as well. Do test it on the bench before you go out and try it for real uh, because the first time you want it tested isn't going to be in a live situation where something bad has happened. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.